What do you do following an underwhelming studio experience, the death of a band member, and ditching your record label after 10 years together? Well, you reinvent yourself. Hi, I'm Bill from Enmore Audio, and today we're looking at how the Red Hot Chili Peppers crafted blood, sugar, sex magic. Going into the making of their fifth album, the Red Hot Chili Peppers had a new lease on life. The sessions for their 1989 record, Mother's Milk, were a disaster, and the album failed to make an impact. However, their new lineup featuring Chad Smith on drums and John Frusciante on guitar, alongside original members Anthony Kiedis and Flea, was the best they'd ever had. The band had had enough of the creative restrictions that EMI had imposed on them, and decided to leave them for Warner Brothers after an intense bidding war in 1990. The following six months were spent writing and recording what many fans and critics called their masterpiece. Here's what went into the making of the intoxicating brew that is blood, sugar, sex magic. For the album, the band chose to work with Rick Rubin, who at the time had produced everyone from the Beastie Boys to Slayer to Public Enemy, a discography that suited the Chili's to a T. Rubin allowed them the creative freedom that had been strangled out during previous sessions, and his vast wealth of knowledge helped them refine their songs into something altogether stronger. The bond that formed between the band and the producer proved to be a strong one. The two went on to work together for the rest of the Chili Peppers' career. Blood Sugar Sex Magic was recorded in a sprawling LA mansion that was once owned by magician Harry Houdini. All members stayed in the house during the session, except for Chad Smith, who apparently thought it was haunted. Frusciante reflected that the unconventional studio locale acted as a catalyst for change within the band. With plenty of time and space to experiment and hone on their songwriting, the band grew profoundly. It also had an effect on Frusciante's mental health, who started getting deeper into heroin around this time. As Cadis remembers, his creative output at the time was so intense he didn't quite know how to live alongside it. Nonetheless, his guitar was nothing short of virtuosic on tracks like I Could Have Lied, Under the Bridge and Funky Monks with solos, rhythmic ventures and lead lines displaying a rich technical and emotional power. He ventured from the weighty distortion of the band's previous material in favour of lighter, more delicate tones. His weapon of choice during the session was an early 60s Stratocaster, as well as a 1966 Fender Jaguar for overdubs, the same one immortalised in the video for Under the Bridge. He often plugged straight into the desk for a twangy, subdued tone, otherwise he relied on Marshall Stacks. As for pedals, he used a Boss DS2, Big Muff and Diamond Ezwa for some dirt and expression, as well as a DOD Stereo Chorus and Boss CE1 for shimmer, such as during the Under the Bridge outro. This was also the first time an acoustic guitar was used on a Chili Peppers album, appearing on two cuts. Fushante favoured Martins, namely a D28 and D12 28 12 string. Under the guidance of Ruben, Flea took a more minimal approach when writing bass lines for Blood Sugar Sex Magic focusing more on complementing each track instead of showcasing his prolific fingerwork. Chad Smith also adopted a more unobtrusive playing style on the album, taking a more laid-back approach. This suited Ruben's production style, who favoured tight, crisp percussion over sludgy bottom end. In terms of vocals, the album saw Anthony Kiedis change his approach too. The mansion was so big that he could actually track all of his vocals in his bedroom, singing into a trusty Shure SM7. After being forced to write more radio-friendly lyrics for Mother's Milk, the album centred mostly on themes of sex, love, death and exuberance. It also saw a dark, vulnerable side come to surface, such as Under the Bridge, which originally existed as a poem about his struggles with drug addiction and loneliness. It took the band four albums and a seemingly endless succession of members to find their groove, but Blood Sugar Sex Magic saw the band catapult from funk wannabes to fully-fledged arena rock stars. Do you have a favourite track of Blood Sugar Sex Magic? 